So I'm here with Tony Award nominated actor Jerry Shea. How are you doing today? I'm great, Ryan. How are you doing, man? Uh, I'm doing great. Uh, so uh, to start off, uh, where did you grow up? I grew up in, in, in Hyde Park in Boston. It's a neighborhood in, in sort of the southern edge of, of, Hyde, of, of Boston. Uh, no, it's not Southie, but it's actually geographically South Boston. <laughs> yeah, uh, South Boston's definitely become like, you know, uh, quite notorious. Were you familiar with like the stories and stuff, everything like Whitey Bulger? Because I know you're like in the film Southie. Yeah, yeah, I certainly was. Uh, you know, growing up, there, there were, you know, just a, a you know handful of family members and relatives of his that I, I knew who they were. They were people I kind of knew through school and, and other things, through other people too. Um, I, I didn't really have any, you know, obviously any direct involvement in that world. Uh, but uh, we were all aware of sort of who, you know, why Bulger was and, and what he was up to to some degree. You know, you know, you find out a lot of things after the fact by all the books and movies that were made about him. But uh, yeah, there was certainly, he certainly had a reputation um, in my neighborhood when we were growing up. Uh, but, you know, I, 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 I tried to steer clear of that stuff as much as, as possible. And, uh, you know, I find, I find there's always, uh, there are always as many good stories about the neighborhoods as, uh, as there are bad stories. So I, I tended to focus on those, you know. Uh, did you always have an interest in the arts when you were uh, growing up in Boston? I, you know, I, I did, but I sort of came, you know, I sort of it wove in and out of my life. Uh, I, I have been a musician since I was about 12. Um, you know, I sang and I played the guitar and I, I always knew from my earliest memories that I wanted to be a storyteller um, and in some form. And I, 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 I kind of figured instinctively that that would be as an actor. Uh, because I just love to watch um, movies as a kid, a little black and white stuff on a little black and white set in my, in my you know, in the living room. And uh, I, so I knew very early I wanted to do that, uh, but it wasn't always the path that I was on as a kid. It was sort of a liability in a way to, you know, growing up as a teen in Boston too, to, to sort of have an artistic impulse in some ways, you know, it, it didn't help you in the neighborhood with your street cred. <laughs> oh, I definitely uh, could see that uh, being an issue uh, of contention. Uh, did you uh, go to uh, a performing arts school? Or no, I, I didn't. I, I went to, uh, geez, a handful of, uh, of grade schools. Um, you know, I was in the public school system for up to like third grade. Then I went to a Catholic school in Hyde Park um, uh, and, I, and I, a couple of different high schools. So I kind of jumped around a lot. And, and most of those places didn't really have any strong arts programs. Um, so there wasn't really a lot of opportunity, frankly, to, to do this. Um, in my church, I, I belong to a, a parish in High Park, Most Precious Blood um, is a Catholic, you know, um, community in, in High Park in Boston uh, that I, my, my mom was involved in that too. So every once in a while, I'd do sort of a, a variety show or something like that when I'd get hemmed in by my mom to do it. But for the most part, I just kind of, I just, I played guitar on my own, sang and just kind of uh, did my own thing for a while. It wasn't really till college that I uh, that I decided to take steps toward the profession and uh, to get some experience. So I went to Boston College for my undergraduate degree in theater arts, and it took me a while to sort of get on that path there too. I was a bio major, and I was a, a poli sci major, and then I left school altogether for about a year and a half, just kind of figure out what I was doing. And uh, I decided during that time off, I was. I was a decontamination technician at Faulkner Hospital in Boston and, and uh, Jamaica Plain. And I said, yeah, I got I to gotta get something else going on here, um, doing that and, and housekeeping and stuff. And I wound up, uh, I wound up deciding to, to go back to, um, to BC after a leave of absence and, and, uh, and focus on theater arts and, and really kind of go for this profession. Um, and so I did a, about four semesters at BC as a theater major, got my degree, and then went on to NYU in the graduate acting program. It's a three-year program, during which time I could have become a dentist or a lawyer, you know, in the same period of time, but I'm really glad I decided to go for the MFA in acting. It really uh, set me on a really good course, but that was a the first real professional serious training that I had formally. Wow, and uh, I saw like uh, on your uh, bio that you, uh, after like NYU, you studied at the uh, Stanislavski uh, Moscow uh, <laughs> School Art Theater yeah. Yeah, it's a Moscow Art Theater School. Stanislavski uh, founded a theater um, and school uh, in Moscow, and that's really the state, sort of the national theater of, of Russia. Right. Um, and, and it was the place that was sort of where uh, the, the method, uh, you know, his system of acting or Stanislavski's sort of uh, original system of acting came up. It's where 
he really created a, a way into the craft of acting that uh, helped people to be natural and relaxed and use your imaginations and substitute memories from your own past and into the scene that you're playing. Uh, so that was really kind of the foundation for a lot of people to Lee Strasberg, Uta Hagen and others to, uh, to, um, to, you know, sort of devise their own methodology for acting and teaching. Uh, so that was where I went for, we, we were there for, I guess it was just under a month, um, right uh, before the fall of the Soviet Union. It was actually a, a coup attempt in Russia when we were there. It was an exchange program between NYU students and Moscow Art Theater students. And my class got to go over there and spend time training at, at Stanislavski School and tour the country. Um, and a, a quite a, a quite a tense time, but we were unaware because there was so much going on in international news. There was a the jet fuel shortage. My, I was just married a month before I went there, two months before I went, and uh, and my wife said, "You know, you almost didn't make it home. There, 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 there was no fuel, uh, and uh, so many political upheavals were happening. We were just oblivious because they didn't let us know while we were in the in the country what was happening. But it was it was a, quite an experience, and it really uh, informed the way I approach uh, not only." my own performance in, in, as an actor, but also the way I teach. So uh, after um, you know that experience, did you like head back to Boston or uh, what was next for you? For me, um, I was really, really blessed by uh, having some wonderful teachers at NYU. Um, and I've had a number of great mentors you know, from Boston College too. Uh, but, but the folks who were at NYU were industry people who uh, were just incredibly supportive and helpful. Um, and I, I was able to get my first job coming out of school uh, at the uh, at Delacorte Theater in, in Central Park, Shakespeare in the Park. So that was my first professional gig after I got out of school and finished my training. Um, so for me, um, you know, I was, my wife and I were living outside the city in Harrison, New York. And uh, that was where the industry was. That was where work was for me. Uh, and I knew I would remain there. So I didn't get back home for a few years, but uh, eventually I did make my way back to Boston. I had and, taken- uh, You uh, like, you know, had a pretty, like, you know, uh, good experience uh, on Broadway, like, you know, where you were actually nominated for Tony mm -hmm. uh, for the performance as Giorgio uh, opposite Donna Murphy. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that was, uh, uh, it was a really an amazing time in my life. I had, uh, had just sort of finished about a year on a, a musical called Guys and Dolls. Um, there was a, a great revival and, and, and that was, had just opened before I finished school and I went in, there was like the first replacement in the cast. I was an understudy in that show and that just kind of, you know, um, enabled me to, to, to work and make some money, but I wound up doing an, another show uh, briefly outside of town. It was a, a, a Broadway tryout of another musical. And the timing of that sort of worked so that uh, they had asked me to come in to uh, audition for Stephen Sondheim. And uh, I had met him once before, about a year before that for another sort of related project that didn't go. Uh, but um, it was just incredible to be asked to originate a role in a, in a Stephen Sondheim musical. And I never thought, I never even dreamed of it because it was just something that was so far out of my experience and out of, you know, I felt out of my league at the time, you know, um, to frankly, you know, who, who gets to do that? Who hasn't been banging away at it for years. Um, but it was, it happened so early in my career that, uh, you know, I learned a great deal about it. It was challenging, but I got to work with Donna, you know, I got to work with Steve and, and James Lapine who wrote the book and directed it. And I got to work with the amazing Marin Maisie who, who passed away a couple of years ago. Um, um, just amazing people, Greg Edelman, Tom Aldrich, um, Frank Ruvavar, some just amazing uh, Broadway actors, all Broadway stars in their own right, by the way. I mean, this cast, everyone who was in sort of the, the quote unquote chorus roles were, were name actors in, in the theater. So it was, it was a real, it was a real pleasure to do. And I learned, it was, it was like going back to school for me. Fantastic. And uh, not too long after that, you took a break from acting, is that correct? Or... Yeah, yeah, it was, um, it was probably, it was probably about a, uh, a couple of years, two or three years after, after Passion, I uh, sort of don't have my calendar in front of me what, what the year was, but I wound up leaving school, uh, leaving, leaving um, the business. My kids were, my, my kids were young, they were about three, four years old, and uh, I was just out of town. The more, the more you work, the more you travel, and, and, and you have to travel in the business to stay really busy, and as busy as I needed to be as a dad, you know. I wanted to be home, but I wanted to support my family. And if I, if I had to leave town, um, you know, in order to act, 
in order to support my family. It was just not going to be acceptable to me. I really figured out fairly quickly that that was not what I wanted to do. It's not kind of the husband I wanted to be or, or father that I wanted to be. So I, I, I left the business and it was about 20 years before I really started to entertain doing much at all. Every once in a while, a friend would call and, and give me a nice opportunity to do something. And most of the time I couldn't, I didn't really have the time to do it. Uh, you know, so I did a lot of other things for work. I did fundraising. I worked for uh, the governor of Massachusetts back in 98, who was Paul Salucci, and was his deputy chief of staff. Um, and and you know, had some really great experiences up here and reconnected in my own hometown and raised my kids. And and now they're 25 years old. And, and just a couple of years ago, I, you know, before you and I met Ryan in, in a class, um, you know, I, I got the chance to, it was just sort of fell right uh, in my calendar. And I, I was asked to join a a, um, a TV series called uh, for Showtime with Kevin Bacon and, Al and Aldous Hodge called uh, City on a Hill. So it's just sort of one of those things that it took sort of 20 years for me to find the right entry point back into the business, but I was never really sure it was going to happen. Kind of thought about it, daydreamed about it once in a while, to be honest, but, um, but it was a real, uh, you know, a real stunner to me to be asked to return in such a great project. And uh, City on a Hill is an amazing show for people who haven't seen it on Showtime. And you play uh, Cigna. You're like a Suffolk County District Attorney. Uh, like you work in the Suffolk County District Attorney Office. And, uh, yeah, State Trooper. Yeah. yeah, what was the played, experience? Yeah, he's, he's, Hank Signer is a character. And uh, so I, I played a State Trooper who worked for the Suffolk County DA's office. And he sort of ran the investigative team. And his partner is, is uh, Sarah Shah. He plays Rachel Benham. So the two of them sort of a dynamic duo. and the, sort of uh, the operatives uh, for Aldous Hodge. And it was a real, real fun, fun gig. And, uh, and a really great show it was, it was written by Chuck McLean. And uh, he was the creator of the, of the series and Tom Fontana, who is, is an incredible show runner with just a long history of his own. Um, and uh, it was just, it was just the perfect team to do this with. Um, and another guy who you met, Jimmy Cummings, who was a really great actor, writer, producer, uh, who's based in LA now, but we grew up together in, in my neighborhood. Uh, he was the one who sort of connected me with the group. Uh, so I owe it all to Jimmy and Chuck McLean uh, that it happened at all. Yeah, it's awesome. And uh, I had a great time in Center Everything, learning from you and uh, Bob Wahlberg, and just like watching you guys in Center Everything is a uh, really great class. And uh, now, like, you know, the coronavirus is going on. So obviously, uh, like, there's not like, you know, a whole lot of uh, productions and Center Everything going on. But uh, like, you know, uh, do you have any projects and stuff or anything lined up for the future? You know, I've been playing music more and more. And anybody who follows me on social media, you know, Instagram and other things, I just sort of have been just focusing on uh, today, you know. Uh, but I do, uh, I, I've been teaching classes at a, at a place called Hopkinton Center for the Arts. It's, it's a place in my neighborhood where I live now outside of Boston. And it's a, a really wonderful community uh, of artists that teach everything from pottery to, to painting, to photography, uh, to dance and, and voice singing. Um, and I teach the acting classes here. I teach some of the acting classes, uh, some, a, a teen acting studio and an adult acting studio. So that's what I'm doing presently right now. But I, I've been continuing to take meetings um, for TV shows and films and things. There are a couple of things that were uh, way too soon to, to discuss, unfortunately, but things that have been impacted by the timeline of this of the uh, coronavirus uh, pandemic so we'll restart we'll restart conversations and see what happens with with those projects as we go down the line but for now you know all bets are off we who knows you know funding can come and go over something like this and uh, everybody uh, you know sort of it, it, it's anybody's guess as to when we'll start back in but I do think we're going to start back in really strong uh, particularly in television and film you know theater will feel the impact for a while no doubt people will have some concerns but you know we'll We'll get through this, you know. We'll 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 uh, we'll have the this will open up again, and uh, it may take a little longer than we're comfortable with, but but I'm confident that things will come back. It's interesting. Someone said to me earlier today, "Isn't it interesting how uh, you know one of the first things that you cut when you know in budgets, in school budgets, and town budgets uh, are, are the art programs in a community in a school system." But the thing that people turn to are things like Showtime Network, Netflix, uh, you know, uh, Amazon Prime, they, they, music, all these things. They turn to us, the artists, for, for solace, for comfort, for distraction, uh, for their own mental health in some ways, you know. Um, so I think, it's, it's, I think it sort of reprioritizes things and it's a reminder to me how important our work is, Ryan, you know, as entertainers and as, as artists and actors. 
Most definitely. And uh, we'll leave it like that. Thank you so much for taking the time. And I'm flattered that to be asked, man. Ryan, thanks so much. I, I, I hope to see you again in another class or, or uh, heck, to hopefully work with you at some point in the near future. Definitely. I hope so, too.